This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. And uh, in this particular JMeter series, today we are going to cover, uh, we will talk about what are the different components are available in JMeter, right? There are different features are available, different components are available. So I'll just give you one basic overview of some of the important uh, components. And in the upcoming videos, I'll be telling you that <clears throat> in more details about each and every component. So first, the, the moment you open your, uh, let's see, JMeter, first you will see that, okay, this is the test plan that you are getting it, right? Under this particular test plan, what you have to do, you have to add one thread group. This is something very important. Then in the thread group, you can give the any name. You can, if you really want to give a name, let's see, I want to give a thread uh, for Google, thread group for Google. Some comment, if you want to write some description, if you want to write, you can simply write it over here action to be taken after a sampler uh, error you just want to continue you want to stop the thread you want to stop the test you want to stop test now some configuration like you can do that if any kind of error or sampler error is coming so sam okay then after that you will see that these three important properties that number of threads number of thread means number of virtual users that you are going to use it so number of virtual users guys it's always equal to Whatever the number of users that you are giving, let's say I'm giving 100. It means this particular, a particular use case, a particular scenario, okay, will be executed by 100 threads, by 100 users. So we are going to simulate the number of users or connections to your application, whatever the server that you are using. It means 100 times we are going to make a connection. So 100 or whatever the number you want to give. Let's say I'm giving one, it means one single user. If you're giving 10, 10 different users will be created, okay, virtually. Then ramp up period. This is a little confusing. Ramp up period means, guys, what happens? Let's see, if you're giving ramp up period as around, uh, let's see, thread count, you are giving around 10. And the ramp up period, you are giving 20. So ramp up period means you are going to tell JMeter how much time it will take to ramp up for all the threads that you have given. So let's see, I have given 10 threads. So how much time it will take? For example, let's see, 10 and 20 I have given. It means JMeter will wait till 20 seconds to make sure that, okay, all the threads are up and running. So this is called ramp up period. So ramp up period means how much time, right? How much time this particular thread or number of users will be, uh, would be taking some time. So that will be defined by ramp up period in seconds. So let's see, if you are giving 20, as a ramp up period and 10 is a number of threads so each thread will take 20 divided by 10 is equal to two seconds so two seconds will be taken by each and every okay each and every thread so that's why we have to ramp up period means it will tell jmeter how long how much time it will take to ramp up to all the full number of threads that you have taken okay like this then this is the formula remember this thing for each thread it will take two seconds because you have given 20 seconds of the ramp up period and total number of threads are 10 seconds that you have given then we have loop count loop count means the number of times that you are going to execute a particular use case a particular scenario right you will create number of scenarios let's see i want to create only add to cart i want to search api is there or search functionality or for search use case is there or let's see login logout is there it means how many number of times the test to be executed like this and if you really want to execute forever then you simply select the infinite like this over here so this is the concept of okay these three important things so number of thread means and number of or whatever the threads you want to generate ramp up period means how much time jmeter will take to ramp up all the threads so the formula will be a ramp up period divided by thread okay for each and every thread and then loop count means whatever, how many times you want to execute the same scenario, whatever the scenario, whatever the test that you are going to write, how much time it will, how many times you want to execute, how many iteration you want, and infinite means n number of times you want to execute that. Okay, so let's, I'll make it one, one, one only. After that, what you have to do, you have to add a sampler. So right click on it and go to add sampler. So sampler will be visible only under thread group. If you see sampler available in test plan, you won't see that sampler, right? You can see the thread group, but you cannot see the sampler. So sampler is one of the most important factor, one of the most important thing in uh, JMeter. So you have to check the sampler. 
the number of samples are available at the HTTP request is the most usable. So we will be using HTTP request most of the time. 99% cases we will be using HTTP request. Well, let's see if we want to do some FTP request. Let's see file transfer protocol and you want to have some use case for performance testing point of view for FTP servers for JDBC servers like that in that case or SMTP server also or LDAP request or something like this if you really want to use it we can do that but in our syllabus most of the time we will be using HTTP request so let's say I want to add a sampler with HTTP request so you can simply click on it and it will again generate one okay uh, configuration over here that uh, HTTP request is the name what is your protocol so let's say I want to give my protocol HTTP S I want to use what is the name so let's see I'm giving uh, something like this let's see www dot uh, let's see google.com I want to give this particular name on which port number so we will write 443 port number 443 is a default port number for HTTPS okay guys so remember this thing so I'm giving let's see for port number is 443 and uh, this is a typical get method and then I want to execute it now the moment you execute this particular request this request will be ba uh, will be executed on the basis of number of thread configuration that you have done it over here now this is the sampler let's see i have added now along with the sampler what you have to do you have to add a result right you have to add a listener over here so right click on your thread group okay right click on it go to add and uh, go to uh, here you will see go to one second listener over here the last option and here you simply select the view result tree so here the result you can see it over here there are different other types of uh, results also other type of listeners also so what exactly listener will do listener will listen what is happening and then it will keep showing the data keep showing the sample request and the response over here so let's say i want to execute it so for executing it so first you save it so simple press ctrl s and then save it so let's say i'm going to save it and you can save as a test plan as whatever the file name let's say i'm giving some sample dot jmx i want to save it on my desktop and then you simply save it okay so this file will be saved and after that you have to run it so there is a run button you can see that and you simply click on run button and here you click on view result tree you can see that okay this request got executed once why because the thread count is only one now let's say I'm giving the thread count is five. Then you simple run it again and go to view result tree and run it again. Now you can see that okay, this particular request, the sampler is getting executed five number of times because five users are there. User number one, two, three, four, five. And you can see that okay, how will you validate? In the right hand side section, you will see that okay, this is my thread group, Google one of one. Then the second thread is one, two, then one, three, then one, four, and then one, five, like this. So one by one, all the threads are getting executed over here then some basic information that at what time sample got started what is the load time the load time is 159 milliseconds so guys whatever the time in jmeter whenever you see any time over here every time will be in millisecond not in seconds not in minutes it will be in milliseconds connection time how much time it will take 76 connection time what is the latency 157 is the latency what is the size in bytes the total size in bytes is around 1 lakh something I mean sorry 15,939 send bytes 119 if there any, any header is there what is the size for the header 939 what is the total size of the body 15,000 bytes are available like the sample count one error count and other information also will be so you can check the information over here then you see the request like what kind of request that we are sending so this is a get request according to uh, API rest API bond of view and this is the url that we are sending right now we don't have any data and this is the response that we are getting the complete google page okay the complete dom html dom that we are getting it over here if you hit google same thing for the second request and the third and fourth and five fifth request are there like that you can simply do that now let's see uh i'll do one thing that uh, i want to execute okay five loop count if i'm giving then you see the view result tree and then run it again then you see that okay loop count we have given five it means every scenario like every scenario the number of times will be executed means five times it will be executed so you see that okay this is the first time one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 
25. Why? We have given the loop count as 5 and 5 threads are available. So 5 multiply by 5, it means 25 times the request will be sent to the user. It means 5 uh, five times test will be executed with 5 users. So obviously 5 multiply by 5 is equal to 25. So like this also we can simply do that. Then uh, you can see, view, go to view result tree. If you really want to delete the tree, complete a report, you simply click on this. This is for clear all. Okay, for clearing your results over here. Then again, you go to this thread group and right click on it. And there are some other options. Let's see logic controller. So this is about the sampler that we have seen that. Then the next option is a logic controller. In logic controller, different types of controller algorithms are available. Let's see if controller on the basis of some condition, then only if the condition is true, then only it will be executed. Otherwise, it will not be executed if the condition is true or false. Transaction controller, loop controller, just like you know for loop and while loop it, it you can create that so let's see some other controllers are also available so i'm not going to cover the controller right now i'm just giving you the overview let's say i want to add the loop controller and uh, this particular loop controller let's see i'll add the http request under this particular loop controller okay like this and uh, okay over here so loop controller means how many times the loop you want to provide so let's say i want to execute for five times and i'll go to my thread group thread group uh, only one scenario should be executed only once and number of thread users i'm going to use five right now you go to your view result tree and uh, just clear it and run it again so you will see that okay again 25 requests are coming why because the loop count i have given what is the loop count i have given five times so this is just like for for loop integer i equal to zero to five so this is the highest range I have given five. So five times the same thread will be executed. So right, one single thread is getting executed five times. So five threads will be executed five multiply by five times is equal to 25 times it will be executed. So like that also you can simple give the loop count, loop controller, while loop and other things also you can simple do that. So I'm not going to cover each and everything guys. In very detail we will do it later. So I'm just giving you the overall how many components are available. Then you right click on it, then you go to uh, let's see pre processors. So, some pre processor, if you before sending the request, if you want to do something, <coughs> sorry, okay. So, let's say I want to add some parameters, I want to add some JDBC processors, I want to add some regular expression in my uh, user parameters, something like this sample uh, timeout I want to give, or I want to add some bean shell pre processor also, that also I can do that. Then we have post processors after that. Uh, let me, let's see when you get the response, what exactly you want to do that. So let's say I want to do like CSS selector extractor. I want to do then some XPath extractor, XPath2 extractors, bean shell post, uh, post processor, some function, some code also you can write it. If you want to capture some uh, JSON, just like we do it in rest assured, right? The JSON path and everything. That also you can do that JSON extractor from the JSON, uh, from the JSON response boundary extractor regular expression extractor you can do that so these are the post processor if you really want to write after the after receiving the response that we have to do that then we have number of assertions which is very important for your testing point of view that what if the response is coming the response is right or not so you can write a lot of assertion like response assertion json assertion size assertion okay what is the size of the response body that we are getting xpath assertion html security xml assertion you can do that so a lot of assertions are available that uh, also some examples we will be seeing in this particular course then timers if you really want to provide some uh, timers let's see constant timer means the static timer just like thread dot sweep then some if you want to generate some uh, random timer or precise throughput timer and all those things uh, having the gaussian random timer having their own uh, algorithm and the logic we will be using it then test fragment generally we don't use it and uh, the listener i've already told you config element one more thing is there that is your let's see i want to set up my data i want to parameterize my data right i want to let's see i want to generate uh, i want to log in with 10 different username password in that case you can simply do that okay with the csv data configuration you can do that data driven approach you can use that some cookie manager we will be seeing that header manager if you have some header in your request okay let's see authentication header or something like this you can add it there as well some cache you want to maintain you can do that cookie manager if you're passing some cookie let's see 
the local is equal to english or local is equal to brazil uh, local is equal to chinese or whatever you can simple do that so a lot of other config uh, you know elements are available guys you can simple do that right and the listener i have already told you that in listener it's generally for the reporting point of view view result tree some graph you want to generate some aggregate report you want to generate okay like that we can add the listener also so listener will keep listening your uh, execution and then on the basis of that it will generate the report like that okay so these are the important things if you go to the result tree once again if you see that you can immediately check it over here that okay what kind of request we are getting if you are getting let's see 200 with okay it means the request is successful if you are not getting 200 let's say you are getting 404 or you are getting 400 or if you are getting 500 right in that case what do you have to do that uh, you have to uh, check that okay yeah my response is correct or not so the moment you get any other you know other than 200 in that case the request will be in red color <clears throat> so that also something like this negative scenarios and all those things we will be covering right so that's all about the controllers uh, different components are available in uh, jmeter we will be looking into it it's very simple guys don't worry about that we will be covering each and everything most of the thing i'll try to cover from my side thank you so much thanks for watching this particular video guys keep watching navin automation labs and if you have any questions feel free to ask me thank you so much